Hey there, Hopewell kids. Welcome back for another week, which means another awesome week of Summer Sunday School. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm glad to see you're here. I hope you're having a great summer so far. What are you guys doing with your summer? Are you going outside and exploring nature? Are you taking it easy, just chillaxing at home or maybe at the beach? Maybe you're traveling or going on vacation with family and friends. If so, can I come? Maybe you're partying up quarantine style. Or maybe you're just going plain crazy being at home. <laughs> Whatever you guys are doing with your summer, I hope you're having a great one and having lots of fun. Know that I miss seeing you every week, but I hope that you're tuning into these lessons and gaining a lot from Sunday school each week. Feel free to reach out and shoot me an email or a text or a phone call if you have a specific Bible story that you'd love to see coming up. We do have a couple weeks left of summer, so I'd love to take your requests. Just call me DJ Libby. We have learned a lot so far in Summer Sunday School, so I'd love to do a quick recap with you. We've talked about Abe and his great patience. We've talked about King David and his selfishness. We've talked about Joseph and his great trust in God. And then last week, we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how they never gave in to peer pressure. This week, we're going to talk all about fear and focus on another Bible story from the book of Daniel. What are you guys afraid of? Do you have any fears? Are you afraid of spiders? Heights? Ah! Snakes? This one's rubber. Maybe you're afraid of the dark. Whatever your fears, don't worry, we're all afraid of something. And today's story is going to help us be more brave because we're going to talk about a guy who was so brave and he never forgot that God was always with him. And that's what today is all about, learning about fear and how we don't need to be afraid because God is always with us. Are you guys ready to jump into our story? Okay, let's go. Today's lesson can be found in the book of Daniel, chapter 6. And it's all about, shockingly... <gasps> a boy named Daniel. Daniel was a great follower of Jesus and he prayed to God three times a day. And even though he was a Hebrew, the king of Babylon at the time, King Darius, really, really liked Daniel. King Darius recognized that Daniel had a lot of abilities and talents. So he made Daniel the head of his kingdom. This made some of the other advisors in the kingdom very jealous. Oh no, here we go with the jealousy themes again. Remember a couple of weeks ago talking about Joseph's brothers and how they pushed him into a pit? What are these advisors going to do to poor Daniel in this story? He's a good kid. Just like Joseph's brothers, these advisors under King Darius wanted to get rid of Daniel. They were so jealous of him and that he was promoted over them. So they devised an evil plan. <laughs> This is a fake beard I'm stroking. Pretend there's a beard here. Maybe I can put a beard here. Bing! These jealous, evil advisors persuaded King Darius to make a law that no one in the land could pray to anyone but him. Much like last week's story when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were pressured into praying to a golden statue. Now King Darius is saying, don't pray to statues, don't pray to Jesus, pray to me. What is it with these kings? But Daniel was a very obedient man. He never made a mistake. And he decided to keep on praying to Jesus three times a day. Good old Daniel. But the advisors were smart and they laid a trap to catch Daniel in the act, praying to Jesus. And so they caught him and ratted him out to King Darius saying, Daniel was praying to Jesus. I'm just imagining that these three jealous advisors sounded really whiny. What do you guys think? King Darius was actually really heartbroken. He liked Daniel a lot and was really upset with him for breaking the law. He even tried to figure out a way to save Daniel, but there was no changing the law and nothing he could do for Daniel. Yikes. So I haven't told you guys yet what the law said. 
It's really simple, really boring law. It just basically says that if you don't pray to King Darius and you pray to anyone else in the city of Babylon, you will be thrown into a lion's den. <laughs> Rawr. Okay, what is with the punishments in Bible times? Last week we talked about a fiery furnace. Joseph was thrown into a pit by his brothers and now you're thrown into a lion's den. I, 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 I have no words. We're not talking about cute little baby lions. We're talking about big, eat your flesh kind of lions. So for his obedience to God and his prayers to Jesus, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den with a big stone rolled in front so that no one could rescue him. But Daniel wasn't afraid. He knew that God would protect him. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm handcuffed, being dragged into that lion's den, I'm a little afraid a little bit. Okay, I, I, I lied. I'd be a lot afraid. Wouldn't you? They pushed Daniel into the lion's den, rolled that stone in front, and waited to hear screams of him begging for mercy. He was all alone in the lion's den. Or was he? <gasps> Plot twist. God did not abandon obedient Daniel and sent an angel into the lion's den to close the mouths. <gasps> of all of the lions, when nothing but silence was heard outside of the lion's den, King Darius said, roll that stone away and let's check on Daniel. There he was, sitting amongst the closed mouthed lions, looking like a lion tamer all himself. And he was unscratched, unharmed, thanks to Jesus. God rewarded Daniel's obedience and saved him and protected him inside the lion's den. So what does this story mean to us in 2020 when we don't necessarily have to worry about being thrown into a lion's den if we break the law, but it's natural to have other fears. Everybody does, and that's okay. What we need to work on is praying and working through those fears with God and learning to trust him. Remember, we talked about trust a lot these past couple of weeks, and God is going to protect us. We need to fear not. He is always with us. Let's take a look at some scripture that tells us more about fear. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Isaiah 41, 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Scripture is Mark 5, 36. Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe. It's time to talk about the key points in our lesson today. Daniel prayed to God three times a day, morning, noon, and night. The scary lion's den did not scare Daniel. God rewarded Daniel's obedience and protected him inside the lion's den. Let's take a moment and bow our heads and fold our hands and close our eyes for a word of prayer. Good morning. Today I'm coming from you from one of my favorite places, but a place that I used to be afraid of um, until I remembered in God's word from Hebrews 13, 6, Paul tells the Hebrews uh, to that they can trust in the Lord, they can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? From Hebrews 13, 6. Pray with me, please. Lord, I thank you that even when I feel fear, I can trust that you are walking with me and you will never leave me. Thank you for that confident trust that we learn about in the Bible. And thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. So today's lesson is all about knowing that God will always be with you. And that's a good thing because we're learning a lot in summer Sunday school and we're going to need his help. We need to call upon him and pray daily, just like Daniel, and ask him for help with patience, putting other people first, trusting in him, not giving in to peer pressure, and not being afraid. So I hope your summers are going very cool indeed so far. But don't forget us here at Hopewell. We haven't forgotten you. We miss you so much. Keep tuning in to Summer Sunday School each and every week. 
log on for our Zoom calls every other Wednesday, our Click Kids get together or anybody that wants to join at 6 p.m. And every Sunday night at 7, join us for some fun and fellowship. Don't forget to reach out to me if you have a Bible story that you'd love to hear. What are my summer plans, you ask? These days, I've been just sitting around the phone waiting for a very important phone call. Hello, hello? Oh, hi, Grandpa. Yeah, I thought you were Hopewell reopening. I just really miss my kids in Sunday school and on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. It's not as much fun without them. Okay, I love you too. I know I'm doing, this isn't even a real phone. Bye, Grandpa. Have an awesome week, everybody, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye-bye.